Hi, I'm Bruce Asia. In this video, I'm looking at send effects in Cubase. Now, send effects can be a little bit confusing to begin with. Unlike insert effects, which literally process whatever directly goes through them, so you actually insert them on channels, in, they could be on input channels, in fact, audio channels, instrument channels, output channels, and many other types of channels, send effects are somewhat different. What you're doing in effect is processing something in parallel. So you're sending part of the signal from this particular channel, be it an audio channel or an instrument channel, you're taking it off somewhere else, you're running it through another effect, and then the output of that effect is then being joined back in to the main output or wherever you choose to send it. So if we think about the plumbing analogy, what we're effectively doing is we're plumbing in another pipe and actually sending some of that signal. In the case of plumbing, it might be water. You're sending some of it around another route whilst maintaining the direct, direct route as well. So then you combine them later on. So this is something that we'll look at actually in the project window and then we'll also be looking at in the, in the mixer as well. So here we have a couple of audio tracks. We can look at them in the lower zone. So the mixer in the main project window and you can see if I play the tracks, we can look at the signals coming through here. We've got the individual tracks and we also have the output channel here. So the tracks are sending their audio to the channels in the mixer. This button here is for the insert effects. We then have this third button for send effects. Now at the moment you can see that if I click on that to try and add a send effect, what it's actually saying is the only place I can send the signal to is the stereo output. Now this is because we haven't actually set up a send effect processor. So we need to set these up separately. In fact, I'm going to go into the main mix, so the main mix console window becomes a little bit more straightforward. You can see how some of these things all fit together. So I'm going to close that down. I'm going to go into mix console. And once again, I have the two channels with their audio. I have the send effects. Now I've enabled, I'm showing the send effects in the rack here. So we've got the send effects. And as before, there's nowhere to actually send them to other than the main outputs. Now we're already sending these channels to the main outputs. We can see that in the routing. If I bring up the routing here, you can see if I open this little routing box here, you can see that the main outputs, the output of these channels is going to the stereo and main stereo outputs. So what I need to do is I need to set up a send effects processor. So something I'm going to send some audio to. And to do that, I click on, I right mouse click here and do add effects track. And then I can choose the type of effect I want to send it to. And in this case, I'm going to choose to send it to a reverb. And let's choose Revelation Reverb here. Um, I'm going to call it Reverb 1. And in fact, it's very useful when you're actually setting up send effects to give the effects numbers as well. So I'm going to call it Effects 1 dash Reverb A and add track. Now the configuration, it says mono, I'm going to change that to stereo. So I've got stereo input, stereo output, and it's going to be sending it through to this revelation reverb. Let's just click on add track there. Now you can see now we get this separate effects track. And as before with other uh, track types, channel types, we also get the different colored uh, slider on the fader top there to denote it's actually an effects channel. And we can see here that it's actually being sent back out to the output of this reverb is going to be sent to the main output. There is no input because we can choose where we want uh, which channels, multiple channels, can actually send to this effects block. Then I can then choose, let's choose this kalimba here, I can choose in the effect here, I can choose effects 1, reverb A. Now you can, if you want to, right cl mouse click on a channel in the mix and choose add effects channel to selected channel, in which case it will automatically set this up. But I wanted to show you the more long-winded way of doing it just so you can see how, how, how we work in stages and how the audio is actually processed. So now let's just open up, let's have a look at the, um, the channel here. Let's have a look at, open up the insert. And if I open up, choose to see inserts in here, you can see that revelation, this reverb, is set up as an insert. I'm going to open that window here. And you can see here that it's been set up. This reverb is an algorithmic reverb. And you can see that basically it's been set up to, um, these are all the parameters that control the reverb type. 
Uh, one thing to point out that the mix level is set to 100%. So that means that whatever comes in is going to be 100% processed by the reverb. This might be the case with a reverb or delay. These are common things you would set, set up as send effects. And most of the time, you'd be they'd set up so they completely and entirely process what audio goes in. So that mix will default to 100%. Now let's go to the kalimba track and uh, let's mute the, the drums for the moment. And I'm going to play this. I'm going to bring this number down to zero. Let's play. And at the moment, you can see nothing is going into this channel. There's no activity on the on the uh, on the meters here for the reverb. I'm going to enable it to activate it, and it changes colour. And I bring up the level, and you can see there's now activity on this reverb, and you can hear there's some ambience being added. So the reverberation, the reverb is being added, it's making it sound like it's, a, it's going on in a larger space. If I set that to zero, that means that the same level of signal that's going to the main outputs is also going to the reverb. So it's going, this channel is going to the outputs, because I can mute that reverb, you can still hear it going to the main outputs. And if I unmute the reverb, it will also be mixed in with the full output of the reverb there. And of course I can play around with the parameters in here if I want to change the characteristics of the reverb. So for example, I could change the low frequency time. I can push these values up. Change a pre-delay. Push the overall reverb time right up. Time right up. If I press stop, you can hear that that audio. I've set the reverb time so long that it's still being processed. So that, in essence, is um, a send effect in Cubase. I could, of course, replace that send effect. I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bypass it for the moment. I'm going to choose something else. And it will be, for example, let's choose a uh, stereo delay. If I open that stereo delay and check it here, I'm going to make sure that the mix is set to 100%. That's good practice when you're sending uh, audio to a send effect. Make sure that you're actually processing the entire signal and you're not getting the dry signal mixed in as well. That can cause problems with some type of effect. And then I'm going to press play and see what happens. And let's push the wet signal on so it's 100% on both channels there. Let's undo the sync so we're not synchronizing it to the project tempo. And you can hear the two different delays left and right. And once again, when I stop, the delay will carry on. So the reverb, beg your pardon, the delay is still being processed. The, this, the audio has been processed by this little block here, the delay block, and it's separate to the channel that it's running, that it's taking its signal from, and it's then running back to those main stereo outputs. So you can see in Cubase how send effects differ from insert effects, um, and they are uh, although you can apply pretty much any type of processing as a send effect, and in fact you can set up a whole signal chain, uh, you could run a reverb into a delay or a delay into a reverb and then out to the main outputs or wherever. Um, they are really mainly used for ambient type of effects. That's where they're most effective because they allow you to apply, for example, the same reverb across different channels but in different amounts. And that really is the distinction, the, the particular distinction between send effects and insert effects.